we are going to discuss a very important and serious topic that is a flowchart. So, flowchart is nothing but one pictorial representation of the logic flow through one program. And that is why as it is a pictorial representation, so it is very easy to understand. We know that we are having different high level languages. High level languages means the languages written in some English like format. That means programmers, developers, it will be easy for them to understand and to write code in this high level language. But computer can understand only the language of digital electronics. Computer can understand only the presence of voltage and absence of voltage. So that is why computer can understand binary language. Binary language means that language which deals with zeros and ones. You might be asking me what is the origin of this zero and one. Inside a computer only one thing is going to, going to get detected that is the presence of voltage and absence of voltage. Inside the computer we are having two different logics either positive logic or negative logic. Positive logic means the presence of voltage will be denoted by 1 and absence of voltage will be denoted by 0. The reverse thing will take place in case of negative logic. So, inside the computer either one of the positive or negative logics will be played role at a time. So, that is the origin of our binary language. So, computer can understand only zeros and ones. But here we are going to write our program to have the more easy way to write a program we usually follow different high level languages English like languages like your Java, Python, Perl, C, C++, Android and so many other languages are there. Different languages are having different syntax. The meaning of this word syntax is grammar and different languages are having their different set of commands, set of keywords and so on. Say if, if you want to print hello in C programming the function is printf. If you want to print say hello in Pascal the command is the respective function is write ln. If you want to print hello in Fortran the function is write. If you want to print hello in say Debase or say Foxpro the command is say. If you want to print hello in COBOL the command or the function is display. If you want to print hello in say Java the respective function is system.out.println. If you want to print hello in C programming in graphics mode the respective function is out text xy. So, in this way different high level languages are having different set of commands and keywords. But flowchart is same for all the languages because it is the pictorial representation of logic flow in a program. So, let us discuss some basic symbols in the flowchart. In flowchart we are having so many different symbols are there, but we are considering only those symbols which will be required in our explanation. So, this is my line with arrowhead it is known as the flow line. It will be depicting that how the logic is flowing through a flowchart. We are having this oval shaped box here it is it is written as start here it is written as stop. So, start and stop will be two oval shaped boxes will be there and that will denote the beginning and end of the flowchart. So, from the start there will be only one outward arrow and to this stop oval shaped only one inward arrow will be pointed. So, this is my parallelogram denoting the input output operations. That means, when we shall take something from the keyboard as input, when we shall put something to get printed on the screen then I shall be using this parallelogram. So, this parallelogram will be having one input line and one output line. This is my rectangles for the processing. So, it will be having one input line and one output line. Within this rectangular boxes we shall write the different expressions say x is equal to x plus 1, a is equal to 2 into b, c is equal to 20. So, such lines statements will be written within this rectangular boxes. This is my decision box also known as the diamond box. So, this diamond shaped box will be denoting the decision box and it will have only one input line and it can have 1, 2 or 1, 2, 3 output lines. Let us suppose here I have written compare A and B, A and B are the variables. So, here I can put A greater than B, A is equal to B, A less than B. So, I'm, I can have 3 output lines otherwise I can have only 2 output lines that means A is A greater than B. I can have one outward edge labeling yes, one outward edge labeling no. 
So in this way, one Damon Shepard box that is the decision box should have only one input line and two or three output lines accordingly. So apart from these symbols, we are having so many other symbols in our flowchart, but we are concentrating on them only because they will be required in our next discussions. So let us suppose we are having one series. So sum is equal to S1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 up to n number of terms. So this is the respective flowchart I have already written and I shall trace the logic of this flowchart for this respective series in a tracing table. So this short of table will be known as a tracing table. So let me trace one by one and when you will be tracing please do not apply your brain go on doing the tracing in a mechanical way just just follow the logic flow and go on tracing the respective flowchart. So I am doing this one. So start input n let us suppose user has given the value say 4. So 4 has been given as input s is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1. So s is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1 I am putting this one s is equal to s plus t. So with this s the t will be added so I am putting this one plus 1 t is equal to t plus 1 so the updated value of t will become 2 done. So here you see we have given the value of n is equal to 4 that means 4 terms are going to be added that means actually I am going to add these 4 terms that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on only this up to these 4 terms. So we are expecting the sum you know the sum that is 10 we are expecting 10 as the output uh, of this particular flowchart. So t greater than n is 2 greater than 4 it is not true. So, so I shall follow this path no and I shall come back again s is equal to s plus t. So I shall add this current value of t and that is 2 here. So the current value of t is 2 so that is why I have written there 2 t is equal to t plus 1 so I am just making a cross and putting the current value of t is t greater than 4 3 greater than 4 no so I shall follow this path so I shall come back to s is equal to s plus t so s is equal to s plus t means so I am making this one as plus 3 okay t is equal to t plus 1 so I am making this t as 4 I am making this t as 4 is t greater than n 4 is greater than 4 I think it is not true so that is why again I shall go back and I shall do s is equal to s plus t. So I shall put 4 here. So 4 is getting added t is equal to t plus 1. So the current value of t will become 5 and 5 is greater than 4. Yes, 5 is greater than 4. So print s. So what is the current value of s which is nothing but 10 which is nothing but 10 and in this way print s the 10 will get printed and stop. Here you see my flowchart is giving us the correct result. You can also do the same just put n is equal to 6 please do the tracing and check whether you are getting the required sum as output or not. Okay, now let me do the same thing in another flowchart. So the same series that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to n number of terms. But here there is some change in the logic but that part we shall discuss later. So let me discuss the execution of this flowchart through one tracing table. So start, start, input n. So let us suppose I am giving the value 4 here again. S is equal to 0 and t is equal to 0. So I am putting zeros there. T is equal to t plus 1. S is equal to s plus t. Is t is equal to n? 1 is, is equal to 4? No. So I shall go back. T is equal to t plus 1. S is equal to s plus t. So I'm making this one plus 2. Is 2 is equal to 4? I am just checking this one. 2 is equal to 4? No. So I shall go back. T is equal to t plus 1. So I am making this one 3. And s is equal to s plus 3. So I am adding 3 here. Is 3 is equal to 4? Obviously 3 is not equal to 4. So then what should I do? I shall go for looping again. So this is known as looping, iteration, looping. And that is a very basic thing in our programming. So no. So I am going back. So t is equal to t plus 1. And s is equal to s plus t so I am adding this 4 here is t is equal to n is 4 is equal to 4 yes I am coming out so print s so the value which is going to be printed here is 10. So in this way we have got the answer accordingly. So in the previous flowchart we did this in the next flowchart we did this now what about the 
differences between them. This is the first flow chart. This is the first flow chart. This is the second flow chart. Okay. Now, what is the difference between them? Here you see, here we did the sum at first. Then we did the increment. Increment means t is equal to t plus 1. Then we did the check. And here we did the increment at first. Then we did the sum. And then we went for the checking. So, what is the difference between these two? S I C. I S C. So, in this way, this S and C and I, these three letters can have this six different combinations. So, this flowchart can be done in six different ways. I have done only in two different ways. So, I am giving you an assignment. Please try to solve this flowchart with another rest number of uh, combinations of this S, I and C letters. So, we have done this S, I, C and I, S, C. So, we did, uh, we have done this and we have done this. And rest is now with you. You should solve them writing the flowchart in this way and go on tracing for value of n is equal to 5 or 6 or 4. Okay, now there is another way we can do the flowchart for the same series. So, this is the respective series we are having. So, let me trace this one. Let me trace this one. What is this? So, start, start input n. I am putting the value 4 here. S is equal to 0, T is equal to n. So, S is equal to 0, T is equal to n means 4. I am putting 4 here. S is equal to S plus T. So, I am putting 4 here plus 4. T is equal to T minus 1. I am making this one 3. That means what? What I am doing? I shall go on adding in this way 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. I am going to get 10 back again. Let me test the rest part. Is T is equal to 0? No. So, I am going back. S is equal to S plus T. So, I am adding 3 here. T is equal to T minus 1. So, it will become 2. And is t is equal to 0? No. So, I am going back. S is equal to S plus t. So, the current value of t is 2. So, I am just putting a cross to indicate that these are the old values and this is the current one. So, 2 t is equal to t minus 1. So, it is become 1. And then t is equal to 0? No, t has not got exhausted. It is still with 1. So, I am going back. S is equal to S plus t. So, I am adding 1 t is equal to t minus 1. So, it is becoming 0. Is t is equal to 0? Yes, it is coming out. So, the sum whatever I am going to get is 10 back again. So, I am going, I'm going to get the back 10 again. So, in this way we have done it. So, what did I do? Here actually we have done the summation. Then we did the decrement. t is equal to t minus 1 means decrement and here we have done the checking. And what we have done here? This is the respective decrement. This is the respective summation because S is equal to S plus T here and this is our checking. So, this is our checking. So, DSC here we have done this SDC. So, in this way these three letters that is S, D and C can have six different combinations. So, can have six different combinations. So, here we have shown two of them. So, rest 4 you can try at your end. You can do the tracing of this flowchart with the other logic. So, what we have done? SDC. So, SDC we have done and DSC. So, I have done this. So, rest 4 are pending. So, let me do the tracing for this one here. I am having some planning here. See, input n. So, n is equal to 4 we have given. What is S? So, that is the point to be noted. So, here I, I did not initialize S. I put just question mark there only to uh, only to ask you that what is the value of S I should put here. T is equal to n. So, T is equal to T minus 1. S is equal to S plus T. So, what about the previous value of S? I am going to add 3 there because T is getting added. So, now what will happen? Next time 2 will come, 2 will get added. Next time T is equal to T minus 1. So, 1 will come. So, 1 will go on adding. But there is no scope to add 4 there because we have started adding with the 3 and the value of t is getting decremented by 1 each and every time. So, that is why here we should put 4 as the initial value for s. 4 not 4 actually I should write here n. So, that will be the better one because 4 will be done for a certain case study. So, here I should put n that means 4 will be kept 
and later on it will just go on doing the decrementing and go on adding with 4, 3, 2, 1. Let me complete this one. So, 3 this one. So, now uh, t is equal to 1. No. So, it is going back t is equal to t minus 1. S is equal to S plus t. Is t is equal to 1? No. So, I am going back t is equal to t minus 1. S is equal to S plus t. Is t is equal to 1? Yes, I am coming out. So, what is the sum? It is going to get printed is 10 back again. So, in this way, you see the flowchart can be done in 6 different ways. In the previous case, the flowchart could be done in 6 different ways. So, how many ways? So, we are getting in total 12 ways for the same series. So, it is up to us that which logic we shall apply and how to get the series computed accordingly. So, in this session, I have tried to tell you that, that how to write a program and how to get the logic and there are different ways to write the same program. So, that is the issue that which way you shall follow and it will be convenient for you to write a program. Thanks for watching this video.